We talk about IPOs. We're suddenly losing out to Hong Kong. What's the plan? Well, uh, there are many means to raise capital. We have uh, boosted uh, various measures in September of this year. We announced a multi-agency effort uh, with the creation of uh, various funds to, to anchor IPOs uh, in Singapore. We're seeing a good pipeline from various sectors, including new uh, economy companies, and REITs obviously continues to be uh, popular. Uh, we're optimistic that uh, there will be IPOs coming uh, in the months ahead. Talk to us about the new pipeline. Give us a sense how many, how big uh, are these going to be, like $500 million IPOs, a billion dollar IPOs in a dozen, two dozens? Well, they will be in the hundreds uh, of million and also in the uh, unicorns uh, above a uh, couple of uh, million dollars. And we're seeing a good uh, broad array of companies across the different sectors. And uh, with uh, hopefully conducive market conditions, uh, many of these uh, companies will be able to tap uh, capital via the Singapore exchange. And it would be mainly from Southeast Asia, these companies IPOing in Singapore? Across the board, uh, Southeast Asia. We also have uh, companies outside of Asia. Now, SPACs, one of the most exciting areas, Singapore, Hong Kong, jumping in on bandwagon, but it does seem like the SPACs momentum is slowing down. Your take on that? SPACs has been around for uh, quite a while, over two uh, decades. Uh, but the a, euphoria is recent. Well, uh, it's a means of, uh, another means for a company to uh, tap the market. I think for our SPACs uh, listing framework, it will be uh, interesting for investors looking at Asian businesses, Asian companies, and uh, with the region continuing to still lead global growth, I think there will be companies that uh, could come via IPO via SPACs. Uh, we hear that some companies have filed confidentially. Give us a sense of how soon the first one will come on board. We have a good pipeline, I would say. We are still uh, actively talking to uh, potential sponsors. If market conditions hold, we hope to have the first spec IPO either by the year or uh, early next year. Now, you've had bolt-on acquisitions uh, for FIG, for data, for indices. Uh, Give us a sense of the kind of acquisitions you, you'll be making in the next 12 months. Because you recently raised $250 million. Where will the money go to? We're pivoted to a multi-asset uh, exchange as a, a strategy. The COVID-19 pandemic has shown us that Markets are even uh, more interconnected than ever before. So international investors really want to access uh, markets globally across asset classes. Mm. So we have expanded and acquired and deepened various asset classes. We have a strong uh, balance sheet. Yes, indeed, we tap the uh, bond market. Uh, we offer uh, made a bond issue. Mm -hmm. uh, that is to uh, supplement and complement uh, the opportunities that we see that we will continue to acquire where you can deepen our capability. In 2022, would that be a good year for you to make a huge acquisition? And I'm not sure what sound that we're hearing, but uh, don't panic, it's all okay. Yeah. For 2022, is it a good year for you to make a, a, a big acquisition? We've done a series of acquisitions over the last uh, two years. We'll continue to look at the opportunities to broaden our capabilities, our platform and our services. If there are opportunities that come along, whether that's in 2022 or 2023, uh, we will not be shy at looking at opportunities. Uh, Earlier on, I talked about the competition from Hong Kong, and you're seeing that competition uh, from Hong Kong stock futures contracts the, uh, to, to the A50. Um, how do you think? How, how do you think SGX should be positioned to counter this competition? We have a efficient access into all of the Asian markets across different asset classes, and on top of that, a very comprehensive uh, product suite. Uh, for investors to invest into China from equities uh, in the form of FTSE A50, in commodities, in currency, and also in the uh, fixed income space through mm. the uh, Chinese government uh, ETF. And last year, we did the worst first importing liquidity from uh, one index provider to another from a suite of contracts in a new series of contracts. So I think investors look towards our platform for efficient access into Asia. Uh, we know that FTSE's modeling expansion of underlying uh, China stock index to 100 stocks on 50. Uh, what's the outcome? FTSE has uh, done this uh, consultation. The consultation has uh, concluded. Uh, I'm sure FTSE is studying the responses carefully and will take on board uh, market feedback. Now, in terms of what investors can expect, offshore access to China's domestic stock market, I mean, what are we looking at? 
China is a big market that offers uh, tremendous opportunities. You will continue to expand and internationalize, and I think the market uh, domestically and offshore will continue to grow and offers investors good uh, opportunities to look at. You know. Bun Chai, when you take a look at the market, it's quite interesting how the stock market in particular has been testing new highs after new highs. Uh, is there a sense that there's too much optimism, uh, euphoria even, among investors? I think one key consideration is uh, the view around whether inflation is uh, transitionary or are we seeing inflation likely to stay high for a while. And if uh, central banks, in particular in the U.S., starts to normalize policy, I think uh, there could be uh, expected volatility in the uh, months ahead. What's your take on inflation? With uh, the disruption that we're seeing in uh, supply chain and obviously global growth rebounding, I think inflation is probably going to be uh, high for a while and uh, probably central banks in some key developed markets will have to start to normalize policy. Just one final question before we let you go. We've seen a trend of retail investors pumping in liquidity into the markets. Most of these investors are first-time investors who have not experienced a downturn. Are you concerned that uh, that could be a lot of pain? Well, the, many of the uh, service providers, intermediaries, are also playing their part in terms of uh, investor education. And I think many of these investors are also doing their homework uh, when they invest uh, in the uh, equity markets. So I hope we don't see a very sharp immediate downturn. But if markets have time to adjust, I think the market will be able to sustain uh, the pools of capital going in.